here on the diamond table, I think. So, and really, you know, what has history shown us in the last few days mm -hmm. by these two? Not many mistakes, right? So, I don't really expect much here. He's going to hopefully not scratch off the two. False stroke, no. pulling. And it's amazing. You could see him turn his head after making a beautiful shot, and knowing that probably the cue ball was in jeopardy. It was almost as if he didn't see it. It wasn't really happening. Oh, that's a scary break right there. If he can get that one going, the one was tracking nicely. It ended up nice anyways, but if he could repeat that speed, he could really put a lot of racks together. That was a great week. Alicante, Spain. Sweet stroke there by the lefty. May fall a little straight here. The one thing about Filler is that he does so well is he doesn't panic. So like if he gets in a funny spot here on the eight, he'll go ahead and take some distance on the nine, even though it's a thin cut. He just he understands he can rely on his talent in many ways. Got a lot out of that cue ball, so he should bring the cue ball back past the side. Oh, he's going inside English. So that's a comfortable player right there. When you have the choice of drawing the ball with outside or follow inside. Eight out of ten are going to put that bottom English on the cue ball. Well, it's early stages in the match, but the reigning champion has been put under a bit of pressure by the former champion, Joshua Filler, races through the third rack and leads Alban Ocean 3 0. I think so. Ah, oh, beauty. Two rail kick coming. About the middle of the top rail, hitting the side rail, eh, about the third diamond, then coming down at the four. He's looking at one rail. Eh. One rail, you know, it's doable. I don't think it offers as much as a, a two rail kick here, but should be some speed. Old stroke, no contact, ball in hand. Okay, so here's the chance for Ocean to get started. And start the clock, please. He's been at the table already in this rack, but that was really hard going. Nothing was coming easy to him. These two matches still running in tandem because the player who was 4 0 down has got off the mark over on table two as well. Oliver Shulnoki now trails Alex Kazakis 4 1. I think it's going to be 4 1 here much longer, though. It looks like he probably takes a seven up in the corner. The angle really offers that for easy position on the nine. And the corners as a whole are just a little more comfortable way to shoot the balls than the sides. Starting to find his feet now then. Two in a row for Alban Ocean. He's halved his deficit against Joshua Filler. It's now 4-2 in the quarterfinal. Okay, so he's got he's got to really get this ball down as quick as possible. Kind of feel like it should take two bounces before it cuts the cuts the one in. Nine well ball. called, and where's the nine? There it is. Wow. Have an ocean. That's some way to get back to run. only one behind. Three on the bounce for Alban Ocean. He looks a little embarrassed about it. But never mind all that. He's right back in this one now. Yeah, fortune favors the brave, huh, Michael? I'll give him another hundred goes at that. And good luck trying to repeat it. But you only need to do it when it matters. Just gradually, 
Alban Ocean is building a bit of momentum here. He'd love to get to the center of the table somehow to be able to cut this five in, but he's still got to make a nice shot on the three. Extension, please. Started off with a 9-3 win over Lo Ho Sum of Hong Kong, who went on to have a very good championship with a couple of good wins after that. He was even more comfortable, Ocean, in his second match against Poland's Daniel Masiol, 9-1 in that. His hardest match so far came against Mats Sietna of Norway. In the last 32, only 11-8 that one. And he was pretty comfortable most of the way against Torsten Homan. A little bit of a late rally from the German, but Ocean still got home easily enough at 11-5. Yeah, these are the hardest to get the line on whenever you're close to the ball. Yeah, it's just you never get, you know, that space to really identify the aiming line. And just just a lot of gut, gut instinct right there when aiming at a ball that's just a couple inches away. And he didn't miss by much, but you can see again the tables are tightening up. Now this is the type of shot you can use the side rail a little bit, pocketing the ball. The overcut's the real miss. Oh, he hits center cut. I think what we've seen so far, Jeremy, is much more enjoyable than if it was just a succession of break and runs and pretty much perfect pool being played. There's a narrative forming, one or two balls being missed, a few mistakes being made, a fluked combination along the way. A little bit of everything so far. Well, the player, uh-oh, big mistake maybe. Wow. So the draw stroke a couple times this game has certainly gotten away from Josh, and he's in a t funny spot here on the nine as well. A bit of nerves, Michael? Not something we often see from Josh. But what right. we do see plenty of from him are great shots. Really got away with one there, avoiding the scratch, but made the most of his good fortune. And he's back in front at 5-4. A little too thin to cut the one in the corner. It is makeable, but I think he's worried about a scratch. He was trying to see if he has a pocket for just the one. If he does, it's awfully thin. Now he caught the eight. Cue ball behind the three, maybe. Now he's going to give up a combo. And the tide just starting to turn away from Ocean again in the last couple of racks. Here's his chance to stem that. We say it so often, don't we? With a player like Filler, you don't want to let him get away from you. He can disappear out of sight very quickly. Got to stay in touch. Oh, that was a nice stroke there, and he kept good control on the one and the cue ball. Unless you're really just trying to move the one in position and then you're facing a, you know, a gunslinger behind you that can make anything from anywhere. So I know it sounds crazy, but this may be a time I go for something a little different. Just quickly, I promised you an update on Kazakis and Shalnoki. It's 5 all now. How Shalnoki's turning that one around? 5-1 down, wasn't he? Where's he going with, the, with this one? He's trying to edge the right side of it, maybe? Oh, he's trying to spin down the table. What a beautiful play this is. Wow. Hats off there, Alvin Ocean. Now, that's a shot you really can't play at your club table. Uh, you know, the, the slick felt really offered that cue ball to spread with the spin off the second rail. A, a little more humidity in the table. That second rail doesn't act like that.
Like a lot of the greats, of course, it seems like he's kind of making a very similar stroke every shot. And what happens with that? That means you're gaining the angles you want on the shots. You know, your tempo's nice. It's a little bit of a fooler. Obviously, they aren't the same swings, but very, very similar. It doesn't change much. Yeah, and you can rely on it, feel confident in it in your own head if you can achieve that. But it only comes with huge amounts of practice. He's never been in front in this match. This is a good time to do so. As the winning line just starts to come into view over the horizon. Ocean, seven, filler, six. Yeah, and he's, it's because he's facing a guy that's kind of had that dominance himself in the last year and a half. And, you know, the pool world had to remind Josh when he hit the scene and did so well how tough it really is. Yeah, when I say he was being tipped to dominate by some people, Josh himself was chief among those. And some people thought he was a bit brash, a bit full of himself. I have to say, I really like his attitude and his demeanor, and he has settled it down a bit, toned it down a bit Winners in recent Winston. years. But he needs to start picking it up in this match because he's now three behind at 9-6. It's just the difference in today's game versus years ago. And not, I think champions years ago would have been champions today. That's just my opinion in sports, but just the effort on and off the table by the vast number of players these days. You can see the training. You can see the dedication. Yeah, and the lifestyle choices they make, the way they eat, staying away from the drink. Lots of fitness work. That's all apart from the huge preparation that goes in on the practice table. All the psychology they look into now. And there's a variety of it also, Michael, just because everyone's not the same. So for a long time, it looked as though we were going to have a really close finish in this match. We may yet, but at the moment, Alban Ocean is threatening to win it comfortably. He's first to the hill at 10-6. And expected. Still okay, though. See a little shake of the head. Probably wanted a hair more angle, but... The key to this shot on the slick table is don't overhit it. Let the bed of the table take you forward and around on the seven. Oh, he put a lot into it. He hooked the ball around instead of spinning it. So if he can pop these last two balls, it will mean that since he was 4-0 down, Ocean will have won 11-2, and that is against Joshua Filler. You could never have seen that coming. Great champions, when they win the great titles, cling to them with everything they've got. And Alvin Ocean is two matches away from retaining his. A wonderful turnaround from 4-0 down, Alvin Ocean became increasingly dominant as it went on. You're only getting tuned into this world championship for the first time today. It's worth telling you that Van Boning produced probably the story of the championship so far last night. 10-3 down to Mika Immonen, the winner of this championship 21 years ago. And he took eight racks in a row to win 11-10. Since then, he's seen off Copenhagen. Yi. 11-8 earlier today. And all that follows. Slightly testing early wins over Waleed Majid and Jan van Lierop, who pushed him to 9 6. It was an amazing comeback that yesterday against Mika. It really was. And 
after that comeback, he was just sat in the chair for about five minutes, taking it all in. He's lost the cue ball a little bit there, though. He can still thin snip this in the left corner, but it's not where he wanted the cue ball. Job done, though. So Shane Van Boning with a couple of breaking runs to start. Leads Chang Young in 2-0. So the players will be delighted this is happening. Shane's gone airborne, needs a little bit of luck, and he's not got it. So this is Chang's first genuine chance in this match. Yeah, and it's only 3 0. Okay, he's been frozen out so far, but it's race to 11. Some of the things we've seen, 3 0 seems like nothing. Same again here, he's got to top this ball through, he's got to play it with a bit of left spin to get the cue ball back towards the eight, or centre table's fine. There you see the left spin, and this is a good shot from Chang. Chang Young then had to wait a while to get any sort of a chance in this match. Now the wait is over for that. And for his first rack, he closes to 3-1 down against Shane Van Boning. The racking issue, Max Lechner certainly hit a shot. They've racked them again. I think they're going to do it another time. Just to make sure that everything's in order now. Shane needs a bit of help here because he's banked the one over towards the six and this is going to give Chang a good chance, this. Playing it into this corner, the two ball goes in the left centre. If it's tight into the left Station centre, code. which I don't think he's looking at that, he could maybe play it off the seven. No, he's OK. I've just had a look. He goes in the, the centre, so it's all about the pot, this. I think he can get the cue ball to miss the nine. Yeah, it was always tracking a little bit close, but that's OK. Kick shot's gone wrong. He was trying to kick it down table. He's caught a ball and SVB's got a nice easy shot here. going on about table two but they're both having a, a practice rack and then that match will resume Shane Van Boning was three racks clear after that dream start. Chang staged a bit of a revival, but ultimately Shane Van Boning leads by three again. Another break and run, his fourth of the match, and it's now 5-2. He's aiming low on the cue ball. So is he trying to get the five over towards the seven? 
can get the cue ball there, basically. Shane's going for the jump cue, so that tells you he's hooked. But with the five being close to the rail, well, he's not going for the pot, is he? So I think he's just going to try and get the cue ball back down on this bottom rail and hope the eight or the nine hook Chan. Foul shot. Foul shot. I actually didn't ten. see what happened there myself. Did he run into the nine? Well, nine's not moved, so if he has done, he must have been exactly place. on the top, mustn't he? We might have another look here. Yeah, just grazed the nine, hurdled over it. So we're back where we should be with two tables operating, even if not quite the two we were expecting. And we can still have plenty more quarterfinal drama here on this Saturday evening in Milton Keynes. Chang breaking, 5-3 down. And another dry break. Maybe we'll have to find a new table for this one as well for different reasons. No, Michael, no. dry breaks are good. Dry breaks are good because it's giving, it's giving the players not an easy break. That's why you're seeing the players hitting the break hard, and that's what pool is about. Getting by seven rocks Getting back in the match. SVB is breaking 7 3 up on Jang. Defeated Ko Pin Yin around before. Look at that, just look at the break. There's actually a video on Matchroom social media pages from the Premier League pool where Shane Van Bonin, in one of his matches, was a race to five. He broke four times and he made 15 balls in four mm. breaks. He is, he is. Ah, this is nice. This is well thought out. He couldn't get the cue ball to stay on the left side of the table. So he made sure the bank and he's decided to give himself what the table is offering. And it's a thin cut on the two. He seems to be thinking very clear. Oh, he's missed the two ball. Oh. It's a mistake, and it's a chance for Chang to try and make something happen. It was a thin one, and they are missable, these. Often when you Extension miss these, code. you hit them into the rail quite soon. He would have fancied it. It's very hard to see what Chan can do with the cue ball from here. But he's got to pop this one ball. Well, that's how hard it was. He's not even took it on. You surprised? No, no, I'm not surprised, to be honest. He knows that's a tough shot. If he could have guaranteed position on the two, he would have took it on. Obviously, the positional shot was not there. These top players, though, they're very good at laying the, you know, the, the snookers, the hooks every time. Well, as I've said that, Shane's looking at maybe hitting this thin. Extension if, if he can hit this thin, he's going to try and get the cue ball back down to where it is. Oh, he's jacking up a little bit, so does he have to swerve it a bit? Or jump it over the edge of the four? Oh, he's had to swerve it, so he's missed it. Partial. So it was a good safety from Chan. Ball in hand. Yeah, ball in hand. Got to say, it's a chance for 8-5. Start the clock, please. The drama could just be getting started for the evening. Only just missed the one ball you could see there on the replay. Yeah, the combination, the one onto the five. 
there's a big gap there. It's awkward queuing. He'd be queuing down on it. This is horrible, this shot. Extension code. I wouldn't blame him for turning this down, but he's looking down the eye line of this pot. Yeah, it was a horrible, horrible situation he was in there. Yeah, and it was one of those classic situations. He knew if he got off, it was a chance to win the rack from there. But the, if he missed it, he'd be handing that chance to his opponent. That helps take a little bit of power out of the jump shot because he doesn't want this to... He wants to land it on the slate before he gets to the one. Oh, good shot. Good shot, but he's not going to get rewarded. Now, this is dead straight up into the corner. I don't know if you can manufacture something here to, to pot it and not foul. You know, what he's doing is he's coming right. Well, let's just relax for a second. Right, yeah, he's coming around this side of the table. This is awkward. You've got to be careful you don't foul here. Is it going to go off the jaw? It isn't. It pushed it to the top jaw. Jang's out of his seat. Just noticed our colleague Jeremy Jones is uh, sitting out in the arena watching as well. He's behind Tyler Steyer and Nicholas De Leon. And sitting next to Shane Wolford, perhaps surrounded by the Moscone Cup team of the future. It doesn't look like he can get a save five, so it's, it all depends where this five ball goes now. He needs to find a rail. It looks like a strange shot, but it isn't. It's actually very, very clever. And it's clever because of where the seven is. He didn't have many options. He knew he couldn't get a safe five ball. So he's left distance, maximum distance, to make the pot harder. And obviously, if he pots this five, the cue ball is going to stay down here. He's jacking up. This is difficult. He's trying to spin this in and get the cue ball flying across the table back up for the seven. This is hard. That's why he's missed it by a mile. All this was caused because of the smart safety shot playing uh, Shane. Play. Shane played very smart safety shot. Yeah, put him under pressure in every single way there. He knew if he misjudged that, in all likelihood, Van Boning was going to get to the hill, but still a little bit of work to do for the American. Yeah, if you look at what Shane did on the safety shot, he, he basically just gave himself a glimmer of hope Chang should have potted the five clean, let the cue ball come over towards the nine, then played a bank on the seven and maybe tried to pot the eight in the same shot. He's missed a trick there as Chang. Whenever you're jacking up and you're trying to pot a long ball and get the cue ball come back up table, it's such a low percentage shot. Did you feel Chang's only chance of turning this around? It's basically to keep running racks, keep Van Bonin off the table. He wasn't able to do that, and now he's going to need to win four in a row. And again, that's only half of what Van Bonin himself managed last night, so it can be done. But Shane Van Bonin is on the hill. He's one rack away from a place in the semi-finals. It's 10-7. Trying to kick and stick here. Oh, he's lost a cue ball. Partial. Just hit it a little bit too thin. Ball he's intent. trying to full a hit. Start if he the hits clock, the please. three ball full, the cue ball would stay there. You could see it, couldn't you, Michael? It was fullish, but he just squirted down, didn't it? He's 
missed it. He has missed it. It wasn't easy. It was a thin cut one into a blind pocket. We have all missed them. SVB's out of his chair. He actually looked back. Now he wants to be careful. Oh, he's OK. He's not used an extension because the clock doesn't stop when the ref cleans the cue ball. You are right, Carl. It wasn't easy, but when you're trying to turn around Extension a significant called. deficit with your opponent on the hill, they're the sort of balls you really need to get to make great things like that happen. And that may well be his last shot. Oh, Shane's flirting with the nine here. He's now going to be bridging over the nine. If it had landed a little short or a little long, this is unmissable. Now he's just got to... I mean, he's still favourite to make it. Let's not get too silly, Carl, but... He has got an awkward bridge there. And it was potted a little wide. Shane's looking up to the skies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> he's smiling. Yeah, the old adage, the two hardest racks to win in any match are your first one and your last one. But this looks to be over now. Chang Yun Lin, it's been great to have him back on the world stage. He's contributed a lot, played so well against Niels Fyan on his way to this quarter-final. But he will go no further. Shane Van Boning has been runner-up in this World Championship twice. He was beaten in the final in 2015. He was beaten in the final in 2016. Maybe, just maybe, he's finally going to win it in 2022.